In this video, we're going to focus on how we can always show the tool tip in Chart.js. And this is a quite tricky one because what we're really going to do here is not to create a tool tip because Chart.js has only one tool tip. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw these tool tips here. And you can see here we're going to grab the Monday, we get the value of it that is beautiful being displayed here. So let's start to explore how we can do this. In this video, we'll focus on one of the questions, which is how to always show tooltip on a pie chart in Chart.js. And this question came from many people who are really requesting this one. So let's start and work on this. So how can we do this? Well, the first thing what we need to do, we need to go to chartjs3.com getting started. And you might notice this, for some reason, I get this weird error here, but on Firefox, it works fine. But anyway, on here, we're going to grab our demo code. So we're going to scroll down here, copy all of this code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains all of the code. So then we're going to paste this in here. And once I paste that in here, I'm going to cut out the title here, put the title in there. All right. Save this, refresh, and now we have a wonderful bar chart. But what I wanted was a pie chart. So we're going to convert this into a pie chart. To do this, scroll down here, and to the type we indicate pie chart. And once we did that, we need to also remove the scales because a pie chart doesn't have any scales. So once I save that, I want to reduce the width of the pie chart because it will be a square now. So if I save that to width of 500, then it will be a nice square of 500 by 500. So now we have this. What I want to do next is basically, if we're going to always show the tooltip, we must remove the tooltip effect here and this is very important what i'm going to say because basically if you really look carefully look at what happened where the tooltip moves the moment i move elsewhere so if i go here and then move here you see the tooltip jumps from the blue immediately to the black so let's go back here and you can see here so what is happening in charges basically they have changed it in charges 3 that there's always a tool there's only one tooltip meaning we cannot really always show a tooltip in the way i would like to which is by showing the default tooltip here, because there's only one tooltip that will move to the position that it is uh, target on or mouse over on, basically. So that would mean that we need to create our own shape similar to the tooltip with the same text as well. So in this case, we're going to work on a square, and the reason why we're going to work on a square or rectangle shape is because having rounded borders is very, very tricky in the canvas. I'll make a separate video for that. However, this is the easiest one to do with just squares or rectangles. So let's start to work on this. What I'm going to do here is the following. Here in the options, I'm going to put a comma. And when I did this comma, what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to create here a, com a uh, plugin. So I'm going to type in plugins. So we're going to register a plugin. And this plugin we will call here, now very simple, always show tooltip. However, it is, of course, artificial because we don't make a we are not always showing the tooltip, we just create our own shapes that look like a tooltip. That's basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to say here, I will just call the always tooltip plugin block. And then in here, constant equals, or constant always show tooltip equal, and then here, curly braces. And from here on, we can start working on. So what I want to do here, first of all, an ID. And this ID is not really necessary unless you're going to do something with the options. But in, or basically in here, but in our case, we won't do it. So doesn't matter, we can leave that for now. This is just a bonus. And then what I want to do here is indicate the drawing time. In our case, it will be after draw, meaning we want to draw the two tips or basically the shapes at the very end when everything has been loaded. We just correct, and the reason why is we want to make sure that that tool tip or that artificial tool tip is always on top of the chart so it will always be visible and nothing else will will be on top of it so like right now here you can see here if i hover over here the shape this tooltip will be drawn at the very end will be always on top of this segment here or on this slice of a pie chart so this is very important or else if the pie chart will be on top of the tooltip you're not able to read the tooltip so this is what we're going to do here after drawing so we draw everything and then after that, once that's everything has been drawn, we will draw the tooltip shapes. All right. So in here, chart, arguments, and options as parameters. While they are not really very important, this one will be essential for us. So then we're going to say your constant CTX. 
which is basically uh, oh yeah, this is CTX equals chart. So what we're really doing is we're going to grab this and then we're going to break it, what we call a object destructuring. So we can just pinpoint the CTX in here because the CTX is based inside the chart, which is probably this. If I'm not going to say it's chart.ctx, but now I say I don't want to type it like this. I just want to say now CTX and we'll recognize this. Now this CTX equals in the chart a specific object. All right, so now we have this here. Final item, we're going to say your ctx.save. We're going to save the values here. If we save this, nothing happens here, of course. So I want to do two things. First of all, I see no value anymore in the legend, and I also see no more value in this Hoover effect on our tooltip. So let's remove that first. So in here, I'm going to do a plugin, type in plugins. You might see here we have plugins here and plugins here, and that's on purpose because here this one has the options as the plugins. Here, tooltip, and then we say your tooltip enabled equals false, comma. Oh, sorry, we don't need to do comma here, but I want to do a comma here basically to remove that one. Doesn't matter so much. Then here I want to say legend, and then here what I'm going to do here is uh, legend, and then we say here display false, meaning I don't want to show the legend, and I also want to uh, unable or stop showing the tooltip. So if I refresh now and I hover over, our tooltip doesn't show anymore. You can see it does recognize a certain hover effect, which is fine, and our legend is gone. Beautiful. So now we can continue on with what we have here. And what we need to do now is basically work with the data set that we have. We have only one data set, and what I really want to do now is that we are, or basically we need to start drawing a shape. To do this, we will be working with the x and y coordinates, the tooltip, or maybe I need to show you the tooltip temporary. Refresh, all right, so you can see here, I just want to get this dot here, so this exact location. It's because this is really the center of this slice, so we need this one first. So let's start to do that first. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, if I would say here, console.log.chart, you can see already we get some information. Save this, refresh. Open up the developer tab, and then you can see here, if I hover over it, it will grab us a lot of details here, including the CTX and all of this information here, which is all necessary. But for us, the most important will be eventually specifically on the data set, and then within the data set, we need to get the X and Y coordinate of the tooltip. To do this, I need to loop through the data set, but we only have one data set, so it will be very straightforward, although I will use a um, a for loop in here so that if you would have two data sets you can play around with that as well so what I'm going to say here chart and then we say dot data basically here oh, sorry I'm going to go back here we have a chart and then we say dot data we have to go down oh, not too much here we are this is the object you can see here the data object and then here data sets we have the first data set and there's only one data set you can see here length of one array index zero so that's all correct. So we're going to say here data, and then we say here dot data sets, and then we say here for each. So for every item, what I want is here, for every data set basically, comma i, which is the index number, I want to loop through this, and then we will grab the x and y coordinates, or specifically, not even that, we want to grab the data in here, which would be basically the information here, all of this data here. Because we only have one data set, that's why we only have this here, but if you would have another one, so we have a multi-level pie chart, then you would have two data sets, you could see different data. For us now, only single one, because it's probably the most appealing one to see here. So what we're going to do here now is the following. I'm going to say here, I want to get, of course, not only the data set, but I need to look through every specific data point here so we can get the x and y coordinates individually per data point. So we have the data set and then we have the data, which I call the data point. So what I'm going to do here again is another item. And what this item will be is basically the chart dot get data set meta. And then, well, let me show you here. How do you get there? Chart, then data set meta. Let's search for that. We do here, control F data set meta do we see it here 
I'm afraid it doesn't show anything at all, which is all right. Um, or maybe get data set, so maybe we get. All right, so it doesn't show you anything, which is all right. We just need to grab the specific item here, although I was hoping to show it to you, so it would be a bit more clear. But anyway, maybe it's somewhere down here. That's all right. We just ignore that one. We, just, we all basically need this, the get data set meta with the capital D, capital M. And then what we're going to say here, we're going to loop through that, which is an I. So it's index one, all right. And then in here, I'm going to say the data. And the data will be again a for each. So for every data point, so I'm going to put in here double uh, parentheses because we're going to have here the data point as a an argument or parameter, and we need the index. And the index is basically the data index, what I refer to as the value here, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. All right, so now we have this here. We use the arrow function here because it's a callback or arrow expression function is the right term for that. And then what I want to do here is the following. I want to get here the constant, and I say here the x and y values, they will be equal to the data point, data point dot tooltip position. All right, so what happens now is we're going to grab here the specific x and y coordinates of it. And this will save us some time. So if I do here console.log, and now we get the x. And of course, I want to grab here exactly identical, except now I want the y. Save that, refresh. There you are. And you might see here a lot of information. But if I hover over one, it probably will give us the specific one. Uh, although it probably loops through everything, I realize, because it's a for each. So it loops to all. And that's all right. What I can do here maybe is to just console log this here, and I'm going to hide this as well. Save that refresh. And then you can see here the x and y coordinates, which is beautiful. And this is basically what we need. We need the x and y coordinates, but now, of course, that's basically the exact point here of this triangle. And this triangle is what we call carrot. So basically, this is the cloud, and here is the carrot, which is the triangle. And we want the exact dot that points it here. So now we have this. What I want to do here is to make it visual by drawing something. So what I'm going to do here is the following. Let's start to draw something here. So I'm going to say here a rectangle, ctx dot rec. And we need to, we don't need the indentation here. But then we say here uh, ctx dot fill style first because we're going to give it a color. And this color will be the official chart here as cloud color or tooltip color which is RGBA, and then here, basically the following, well, RGBA, and this is a string value, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, which is black, comma, 0 0.8, mean, meaning 80% visible, 20% transparency. So now we have this, we're not done yet, because it doesn't show yet the coordinates where we're going to draw it. Now we're going to say ctx dot fill rec, which is basically the rectangle. So I'm going to make this a square first. And the reason I'm going to make a square here, just a simple square that you can quickly figure out where it is. So if I just make a 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, meaning if I save this now here, we have one and 10 pixels going to the left, 10 pixels down, and then we have a width and height. So basically here, these values is basically this. We have the X value, we have the Y value, we have what we call here the width and the height. And basically, this one here indicates how many pixels in width, how many pixels in height, and this is the x and y value. And the x and y is indicating on the canvas. So if you really look here, this here, this corner here is exactly 0, 0.0. So this here is 10x and yx. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, x of 10 and y of 10. And the y is basically the y coordinate, which is always a vertical. And x is a horizontal coordinate, and that's like that. All right, so we've got this here. This is very important. And what we want to do now is the following. We want to grab basically the starting point will not be anymore uh, this 10 pixels, but we're going to grab this, the X and Y. So here we're going to put in the X, which is basically the original coordinate of that tooltip, and the Y, which is the official coordinate 
uh, in height. So if I refresh now, you can see here now the tooltip points exactly on the location of the square or basically we're the starting point of the drawing which is will be just here on the left top corner of that item as you can see here of the square all right so now we got this so this is really correct but of course we're not done what i want to do now is because a rectangle fill is just a rectangle but what i want to do of course is the carrot i want to put the carrot here and then here up will be the square so now we're going to learn how to draw a triangle so i'm going to draw a triangle here so this will be called the triangle and how are we going to draw the triangle all right so to do this and this is the more tricky part and this is the reason why rounded borders are extremely tricky because you have no fixed shape that has rounded border or triangle we need to put in the coordinates so i'm going to make you the coordinates for the triangle which is the which is basically easier compared to a rounded border that's why i'll skip the rounded border for now i'll make a separate video for that so what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to say ctx.begin path, meaning we're going to start drawing. So this will indicate we're going to draw a specific shape, and then it will ask us, all right, where are we going to draw that shape? Or what is the dot, the starting point of the dot? So we're going to say here ctx.move to, and then we're going to say here, our starting point will be just the x and y value which is basically the point where the carrot is. What I want to do is basically, here's the X and Y, and what we need to do here is basically think in pixels and with X and Y coordinates, because we need to push it up and to the left. Pushing up is negative in the Y sense. Why? Or the reason for that is basically, if up is zero and down is how many pixels this is, I think it's 500 or 400 pixels. Let's see here, what is this? This is uh let's see let's get the inspector element and then here for some reason i'm not able to see it all right there you are 500 pixels in height so that would mean if this is 500 pixels in height uh or the bottom is 500 and this is zero and i want to have the triangle going from this is the down point and then going up let's say up left first so we need to go minus in y meaning we need to deduct if this would be let's say 250 pixels going up would be minus five pixels and then going to the left would be also minus five in the x all right sounds all complicated don't worry i'm going to show you later on just follow along with this because this is just a very tricky part so we're going to say you see the x then we're going to say a line two indicating we're going to move the line so where are we going to move the line we're going to move it to x minus five meaning we're going to the left so we're going to the left just think about scatter chart we're going to the left in coordinates all right and then we say comma, and then we're going to say here y, and then we do here minus 5 as well. If we do this and save this, and refresh, let's see here. All right, it doesn't draw anything because we have something on top of it. Save this and refresh. All right, it's not done yet, of course, that's why. So then what I need to do here is, well, basically we could do here that's this, ctx.fill. And this would basically say draw a shape with the inner border or the inner background or the background color filled up with the same with the same color so if i refresh here doesn't show because we're missing still the other triangle fair enough so i'm going to do another one i'm going to say here line two and then exactly the opposite so what i want to do now instead of minus x i need to go the coordinates to the right meaning i need to go into positive x so i need to do here plus let's say plus five so x plus five why x plus five if we have a triangle like that then we are here we go here to here that would be negative five so y plus five because zero would be the default point and then minus of plus five additional will be extra so five additional so then we say here y will be of course same level in height so i'm going to say here minus five in the y so if i save this now and refresh we now have our triangle beautiful so this is now our first shape and this was luckily the hardest one for now and we that's why we're skipping these rounded borders because it can it will be more complicated with that one it requires that if i'm not mistaken eight lines of code anyway what i want to do now is just to make a rectangle we had the rectangle here but this rectangle is slightly more tricky because the rectangle while being here we need to figure out now the exact coordinates of that because we need to have the width here correctly and we need to be here. So if I do this right now, if I just save this, refresh, 
you can see what's happening. It just goes down here at the starting point, which is correct. So I need to go up. But what I need to do is I need to go probably not five pixels up because this entire box needs to go up. And if this box is uh, 10 pixels, that will be fine. However, in our case, our box will not be 10 pixels in height. And the height is this one here. Remember, this is the H. This will be 20 pixels because the, the text will be about 12 pixels in uh, font size. So 20 pixels being up and down a little enough space if i refresh this you can see here now we get a bigger one that is fine now let's push this up so how do we push this basically up we're going to say here on the y and let's say if we do minus 20 what happened if i save this we are not up enough because we're just on top of the triangle so and the triangle is minus 5 as well so probably minus 25 should be sufficient save that refresh and there we are so now we have one part what I want to do next, of course, the width, and if I do here just 20 width, you might say, why oh, that's that is all right, and then oh, we need to even push it a bit more. So we need to push it to the center. To do this, we need to basically work with the x here. And what we're going to do here with the x is to calculate the width. And let me just say here, uh, width will be equal 20. Very simple now, and this will be here. So we can follow along here, and what I do here width minus this but i need to divide this by two and the reason why is well let me show you save that refresh and now we are moving too much we need to be in the center to be in the center i need to say your width needs to be divided by two now we are in the center all right so now we have this but of course this is just all hard coded width and what we need to do now is start to put in the text so we're going to put in the text and the text needs to be down here and this is the reason why or at least here not not above here and the reason why is that this shape will be drawn first so if you put if you put in the text first the text will be behind this black uh black tooltip uh shape or square in this case and then it would be hard to see the text or you cannot see it at all so we want to make sure that this is being drawn first and then we can do here the text or down below it doesn't matter because the triangle will not touch the text area so then here, we can say the following. I want to say here, CTX, and let's say your font, because I'm going to draw here the font. And this font will be 12 pixels, and then we say here, Arial. All right. So once I did this, and if I save this now, refresh, nothing happens. Now what I need to grab is basically what I want to grab is the Monday and 18. The color here in this case, I will skip. We can do it, but for now, not important. Basically, you're on the shape that is basically the color. So I guess this is a high level of redundancy we don't need. So to make it more clear, Monday, colon, space, 18. That's what I want. So how do we do this? So first of all, let's draw the text here. I'm going to say a CTX. And then what we're going to say here, oh, let's give it a color, fill style. And this fill style will be white. So we can just say here white and then of course we didn't have yes the text so i'm going to say here ctx dot fill text and this fill text will be equal to the text we're going to write so right now i'm just going to say here monday so it's a hard code one i'm going to soft code later on because we have to do a lot of things basically monday colon 18. so this will give us a, a clear visual of what we're going to do so then we say here the x and y coordinates. So I'm going to say x comma y. But most likely here we need to put that also in proper positions. If I save this now and refresh, you can see what is happening. You can see here even the triangle becomes white. I'm going to explain to you why. And the font is here down. All right. So why is the triangle white? Because we have here this fill style. So it would change. What we can do here is basically reassign another fill style, saying here. In the same color of the black and what we could do here to avoid if you want to avoid really any issues you can do here ctx.restore meaning undo any setting we had above that's why the white was being transferred from here us to here because we didn't do a restore a restore needs to be done always at the very end as well because we want to make sure that whatever we have everything should be removed afterwards as well because if ever we would draw something else in another plugin or another item in Char.js, it will grab that as well. So I want to make sure that the restart is at the very end as well. 
to undo anything whatever we have so if I save this here refresh there you are but you can see here now as well the, the triangle or the carrot is basically on top of the text here because the triangle will be drawn at the very last so if you want to be more efficient in your code you can remove this and just put this up here and then this would avoid the issue here and oh, we have that there as well CTX fill where's the text and surprisingly enough oh, of course we have this here we store all right fair enough I'll just leave that for now I'll just do that one there just put it in here because we have the restore and what happens then is of course it will delete it if I would remove this and remove this most likely now it would become black there you are you can see now it becomes black because it will just grab from the upper one so if you don't need to do a restore here so this might save you some lines of code should you do it you can see the best to restore always so it will never conflict if ever you would have any other code between them all right so now we have this but we're not done how because this is our biggest challenge we have this text how do we put it in here plus how do we measure the width of this so that this tooltip uh, or cloud basically has the same size no matter what because right now it's hard coded all right so what I want to do here I need to be here up and in here we're going to work with the width of it so we're going to measure what we want and we're going to also draw basically the text we want so I'm going to say a constant and this constant will be the text and what is the text well we need to figure this one out so what I want to do is comment out this and I'm going to show you now how we're going to grab the text we're going to say chart.data and what I want to do here is a console.log get the data here comment this out save that and refresh all right so now we have this here I'm going to go here to console log and let's search for the thing we need we go in here and in the data set you can see here the labels this is the one I need it's the array value here so if I would do this you can see here the labels uh, data all right and then what I want to do here I just going to make it a nice table so you can see it if I save this refresh there you are so if I hover over you can see here but now you can see it's a nice table and it shows us the index numbers here and this is really what I really love about this console table it shows you nicely everything but I guess it's quite heavy so I will probably remove it for now because it's uh, overloading it however you can see the structure of that so once we know this I'm going to refresh all right so that it will not be too heavy and then what I'm going to do is we have the labels here so we have this one what I want to do here now I just say here and then we grab here the index and the index is the number we need so I say index so if I have this and now I'm going to grab this text here I'm going to change this into that save that refresh now we get Monday Sunday or any other date all right that is number one so the next thing what I want to do because we're not done yet we can say here all right plus concatenation space and then uh, oh no, sorry colon and then space because that was the same as the tooltip if you look here the tooltip Monday colon space and then the value so how do we grab the value as well well very similar to this but then in this case let's do this here console log what I'm going to look for here now is the not the data I want to grab here or the chart data save that refresh if I click on this what we have as well we have the data set and then here specifically the quarters no labels I need to get the value of it see if we can find here the value there you are data sets zero and then we get the, the data value so there this dot data set zero will be index I remember this is the data set we only have one data set so it always is zero but if you would have multiple this is very crucial let me say dot data and then here we can do index if I have that save that refresh all right we grab all of this beautiful so now we have this value here copy that that's plus here and we just put it in here as a concatenation comment this out save that refresh so now you can see here we get the text exactly as desired now what we need to do is we need to measure basically the width here and put it up but we need to make sure that this 
black space will be identical to the text here, or at least a little bit bigger because we need the left and right padding basically. So what I'm going to do is the following. We add this width here, and I realized that I didn't even put here constant width. That's really bad. So we need to do that one as well. So what I want to do now is uh, in here, basically we're going to measure the text size. So what I'm going to say here, this, let's move that up here. And maybe it's not width, but or this could be the width. That is fine because this is, sorry, this is even independent from our text width. This is just the width item here or the width on here. Well, it will be eventually, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to say here the following. CTX, and then we're going to say text width. That's maybe a better term. And then probably we can change this later on. And then we're going to say here is the following. I want to measure, basically I'm going to say here CTX dot measure text with capital T and then here we're going to grab here this variable constant because that's the text that I want to measure and then I say here dot width get extracting the exact width of that so if I do this do a console log and grab this paste that refresh here oh Text width is not defined. All right, so let's see what am I missing. Uh, all right, of course. Sorry, it's not CTX. CTX should be here. This should be, of course, a constant. All right, save that, and then we have that unexpected token constant. No, all right, save. Sorry, that should be constant text with equal. That should be it. Save that. Refresh. There we are. We get now the amount of pixels here. So let's start to transfer this text width into here or basically we can put that in there i want to remove this one now they say text width will be also in here and save that there we are so now we get the exact width here beautiful and just to make sure if you might, might be confused here give this priority while well, basically in mathematics you already get priority but just to be sure we do this again here so basically now we measure the text width uh, now we have this. What I might want to do eventually is uh, we can start working on this, and maybe we might need to give some extra extra width later on. And the reason why is for the for the padding left and right, we might need to calculate an additional width of let's say ten pixels. So if I do here ten pixels in width, what I need to do here as well plus this as well because now this will be in here. I save this now refresh this will be better because you will see now if I push this up this will look fine all right so what I'm going to do here now is the following we have the text uh, this is the text here which is that we want to figure out the position we want to make sure we are at the right place up so how do we do this so here on the X what we need to basically is another text width divided by Two. Then we say here minus. And the reason we're doing this is because right now it's here, but we need to push it here to the side. Let me just remove the tooltip right now because the tooltip is becoming uh, distracting. Enable will be again back to false because we're now really done with the tooltip. Refresh here, and as you can see here now, the text is moving basically exactly into where we want. We have some space here, left and right. Let's push it up now. That will be basically a minus y value, or we have to deduct that here. And this is the tricky one. We have to basically calculate here approximately, let's say here 11, and if you do 11 pixels, then we're fine. Of course, this is a fair share of warning here. If you would have a different font size here, let's say 50, save that, you of course have to change that as well. You can see here it's slightly higher now. So we can do here maybe nine. So that's the only one you have to basically calculate. Nine is maybe too much. I think 10 will be fine here. There you are. So you have to really figure out this one. I don't have yet the mathematic formula for this, but I will figure it out eventually and then I will make a separate video for that. But this is basically the way you can play around. And there we are. Now we have these beautiful tooltips here, showing it always on our pie chart. So this is one of the most important one things. Of course, if you put in a legend here, it will change the position here. And then of course you need to again play around with the 
the height and the positioning in here. However, we did here now everything and everything is now correct. So we're done here. Let's see here, is there anything else? We have the restore, all right, so that's all done. If I save this now, just refresh, all right, everything looks fine and that's basically it. So if you enjoy this video and maybe you say, well, I would like to have a connecting line with other item, which is a very common request that I also have very often. I have a specific video that shows you exactly how to do it on a donut or pie chart. You have a connecting line and then you have here the value or the the label that you want to show. So that will be also a very interesting one. If you like to watch this video, check on how to create the donut chart with the labels outside with connecting line in chart.js.